Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano, your host here for City of Churches. Now, some of you have written in wondering, well, what happened to our previous host, Nick Vavis? Nick, he had the opportunity to work at a television station down south. And we all here at The Net, we wish him well. Now, Nick, he left behind a couple of unfinished episodes of City of Churches. And we've cut together some of that lost footage for today's lost episode of City of Churches with our former colleague, Nick Vavis. So take a look. For some reason. Okay, mark it. And... Hey there, join me in the next episode of City of Churches. I'll be visiting St. Nicholas of Tolentine Church in Jamaica, Queens. St. Nicholas of Tolentine Church technically is located in the Jamaica Queen zip code, but most of its parish is actually located in Kew Garden Hills between St. John's University and Queen's College. Now during the 17th century Dutch colonial era, most of this area was just a huge swamp and salt marsh and it was known as Vlei, which is a Dutch term meaning marshy meadow. Back then there was just one dirt road running through here, it was known as the Vlei Road. It still exists today as Vly Place, which is a popular thoroughfare through the neighborhood. By the 1930s, this rural Queens Valley area was being developed for residential housing. They renamed it Kew Garden Hills. Also, because of its close proximity to the upcoming 1939 World's Fair, which was at Flushing Meadow, that was one of the selling points. Interestingly enough, one of the local residents here was New York City Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia, who maintained a summer home here. Parkway Village is a huge 37-acre complex of residential buildings along Union Turnpike. It was built back in 1947 to house the staff of the United Nations. In those days, the UN was actually headquartered right here in Queens. So they used the old New York City Pavilion Building, which was from the 1939 World's Fair, while the current UN building was under construction. And in 2012, Parkway Village was added to the National Register of Historic Places. Among some of its notable residents have been Nobel Peace Prize winner Ralph Bunch, also civil rights leader Roy Wilkins. The Tribro Hospital for Tuberculosis was built around 1940. And if you notice, there's that circular Art Deco style architecture those curved solariums were designed to let in more fresh air and more sunlight because it was considered, and it was, very beneficial to the recovering patients. Today, the hospital still serves the community, and it's a complete modern medical facility called the Queen's Hospital Center. Look at this building. Does it seem familiar in its architecture? That's the local branch of the Queens County Savings Bank. It was constructed back in 1950, and they modeled it after Independence Hall in Philadelphia. And if you look up top, you can see the four-sided clock up in the bell tower. And this bank structure was considered so unique that they added it to the National Register of Historic Places in 2005. Moving further up Main Street is one of the few remaining local movie houses in Queens. That's the Main Street Cinema, which opened in 1940. Now this old-time theater has definitely seen better days but you can still find first-run films at bargain prices. There was one local resident who worked behind the counter here in the 1970s when she was just a teenager, actress Fran Drescher. Hugh Garden Hills is also home to several other celebrities, actress Ellen Barkin, actor Martin Landau, and two singers who originally called themselves Tom and Jerry, but are better known today as Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel, both attended nearby Queens College. Some of the older residents might remember two landmark eateries that have since vanished. There was the International House of Pancakes, and there was an original White Castle hamburger stand, which was located just across the street from St. Nicholas Tolentine School and Church, which is our next stop. Father Tom is inside waiting for us, so let's head on in. You're watching a lost episode of City of Churches. 
and we'll be right back. It's the long-awaited brand new season of NET's Emmy Award-winning series, City of Churches, with more churches old and new and the neighborhood surrounding them. Join us for the unmatched skilled architecture and the fascinating history of our parish churches. For a unique view the public doesn't usually see, tune in for the return of NET's Emmy award-winning program, City of Churches. Returning soon with all new episodes and a new host, me, Anthony Mangano, right here on NET. Hi, welcome back to the lost episode of City of Churches. Hey, Father, how are you? Good. Nice to meet you, Nick. Good how are you to doing? meet you, too. Excellent, excellent. So walking up, there's this beautiful, magnificent church. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. Thank so you. when I first came up, the exterior, I'm going to talk about a little bit, and then we'll take a tour of the church, and okay. I have so many questions. So at, at the top of the church, the first thing we see is the three saints right. at the top of the door. Describe that to me. Who, who are we seeing? Well, in the center is our patron, St. Nicholas of Tallentine. And on either side of him, we have on, on the left, we have St. Augustine and St. Ambrose, two doctors of the church. Why St. Nicholas of Tolentine? What is Tolentine? Uh, Tolentine is a, the town in Italy the where St. Saint, where, where saint Nicholas um, really served for most of his life as an August, Augustinian priest. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what the style of the church is. It's very modern inside. Mm -hmm. It's not really gothic or anything like that. But even inside, it's it's got a very modern feel. To yeah, it, it does. Say. It's a very expansive feel, but also a you lot know, of light. Yeah, a lot of light coming through those windows and also the lighting in the church as well. So what I didn't see was a bell tower or a steeple. Well, we had There's one. The steeple. We you guys had a steeple? steeple? No okay. bells, just a steeple. And uh, the blizzard just blew it off the off the roof, which was not a you gotta pleasant. Be kidding! Yeah, was yeah. it high? But I found out, yeah, the height is higher than I thought. It's it's pretty high up there. It's like 55 feet. It just fell. Yeah, the forest. wind just blew it down and onto the the plaza in front of the church. Nobody was there because of the blizzard. So 10:15 at night. So. Okay. And then coming through the neighborhood as well, where are we right now? I know, is it well, Jamaica? This is, is technically it? in Jamaica. Certainly the church is in Jamaica, although we have parishes that come from Flushing, from Briarwood, from. Kew Gardens area, you know. Okay. We got Parkway Village, a little section right across from the church. Okay. Um, a lot of different uh, homes there. Okay. And, you know, a number of other developments in the area. We have Lechester and Pominock houses, all part of the, the parish. When was um, this building constructed that we're in right now? 1964 is when um, the church was dedicated uh, from after it was finally built. Um, built it, they started building it in 1961, 62, I guess. 61, 62, and it was completed in completed 64. Completed in 64. And then was there a ceremony, obviously in 64, sure. to, to dedicate, the, dedicate church the church at that time? Yes. Okay. It's not the first church on the site, on the area. Um, what is the first church? The original, original church was built in 1917. And 1917, okay. Mm -hmm. Stood in the corner of Parsons and Union. I'm guessing um, a lot smaller. Right? Much smaller. <laughs> Actually, it was, I think it, 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 it uh, held about 250 people at the time. In 1935, right. they expanded it then to fit maybe 600 or so people and this one now was was built to how many people does this fit roughly yeah. 950 about 950? 900 950 and then the big holiday is people are pouring out the door oh I'm we guessing. got them outside yeah we got Easter, them in the Christmas, aisles yeah, it's, everybody yeah it's good okay That's good. what is um so this church has it been renovated over time are we seeing anything different than sure. we would have seen when it was first built right yeah definitely it was actually renovated First, I think in the 70s. So on my right hand side, Nick, is where the altar was in the early 70s and into the 80s and early 90s. It was really set here on the side. The idea at the time was really to, to kind of bring the community more around the, the altar and the sanctuary and to bring people closer to the, the action. So this was actually the center of the church, the sanctuary, and the pews faced that way? Yeah. So what happened? Yes, yeah. So when you walked in, you were actually coming in from the side Correct. of yeah. the church. Right. Okay. By 2003, they decided it was it was not really working for them. I guess it was the they were kind of fighting the architecture of the building when they put it on the side. 
So now they've kind of reoriented back to the original orientation okay. of now the Now it's building. conventional, really, seating of a church Correct. for the most part. Correct. So, so right. when a bride walked down the aisle, it was really quite a short trip. That from is the true. Old that days. is true. Now they got quite a long trip, oh, about 120 feet, I think. Something and like so that. the statue is uh, St. Nicholas? Right. We have the statue of our, our patron, St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas was an Augustinian friar who lived in the 13th century. And um, he, again, the Augustinians were the ones who founded this parish in 1916 17. So, and they were here until 1997. Um, when they handed back the parish for the, you know, the care of the diocese. And, the diocese. and what right. about the star? What does that represent, the emblem? The star basically comes from a legend. When St. Nicholas was born in his hometown, I think San Angelo de Pantara, in, on the east coast of Italy, uh, that a star went from his hometown to Tolentino in Italy, which is where he really ministered for most of his, his priesthood. Do we see the star? I mean, is it anywhere else in the church that the star is? You know, uh, we have stars in different spots in the church. They used to be, when the church was built, there were actually stars kind of suspended in different spots above the, the nave of the church, actually. Okay. So um, that is, uh, obviously, the symbol itself is very important. That's what right. it represents. On this side, Father, we have the statue of Jesus, right. of course. This is a shrine of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And, you know, an interesting thing, in 2003, when they renovated the parish, that they asked, asked, for, asked people to kind of submit who would they like, what shrines, what statues, what what uh, depictions of saints would they like um, in, in the new church, in the renovated church? So uh, that's shocking. Jesus won, right? <laughs> he's, he's actually in a few of them. We could have no? picked a lot of people, but Jesus won. <laughs> Father, as we were walking in, we passed uh, what looks like sure, the band, if you want to call it that. Right. A lot of the musical instruments, the piano, the organ, mm -hmm. the drums. Right. That's our music area. It's, it's been actually since the renovation, I guess, they've, they've had it here in this section. I think they felt especially it would make it the choir itself more part of the assembly. And also, the acoustics in the loft make it a little tough for the, the choir to hear everything that's going down. Uh, oh, really? So it's area. actually better if it's, it works better down here as far as the acoustics. Right. And the, where is the choir? Where are they situated? Well, they sit really they, behind. They sit behind. They sit right there in those the pews. Instruments. Okay. What about the windows above the choir loft? Sure. Um, the windows up there, actually, a lot of symbols, but. Um, they really, the, the, the windows to the left side are dedicated uh, to the Blessed Mother. The windows in the middle are best dedicated to the Holy Trinity. They have symbols of the Trinity in there. And the window uh, to the right uh, is really dedicated to, to God the Son, Jesus. So the windows really tell <clears throat> a lot of the biblical stories, obviously. Sure, yeah, and, and the rest of the church, definitely. A lot of, a lot of stories, symbols as well, but also a lot of stories. What is the, um, the parish itself, you said, was, uh, when it was established, was the original church? Correct. What, is the, um, what does the neighborhood consist of? We have, it quite, it's quite a mixed area, mixed neighborhood, a lot of different ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. um, probably the largest ethnic group we have in the parish would be Filipino background. We have mass in Spanish for the Spanish-speaking that come from a variety of different countries, Latin America. Do you America. do that? Do you do both the Spanish and I do, English? I do the Spanish mass as well, but also we have a priest that comes in and helps with that. He's been coming for many years, Father Peter Mahoney. Okay. Um, so, um, but we have many other different, different ethnic groups, different uh, people here in the parish. It's kind of a nice mix of people. Got it, mix of people. Well, it's, as we head towards the altar too, a lot of the, uh, the stained glass continues, as we said, Bible stories. Do you have a favorite stained glass window? Sure, I guess that my favorite would be the nativity window, I guess. It, it, sh it really has, depicts the scene of the nativity of Jesus, but also has the spirit kind of hovering above and below it, it has kind of a spring. It's sort of seen as the, the source of life uh, theme, I guess. It's, they really are, they're beautiful. Yeah. A lot of light. Yeah, a lot it's of light, windows. very colorful yeah. windows. And all that is original, as far as you know? Sure, sure. So really, my favorite window starts off the whole series of windows in the church. So you have the nativity there, but then you have, on this side of the church, many scenes from the early life of Jesus. Um, so the presentation, um, gift of the Magi, the Magi before Herod, the flight into Egypt, so many different early scenes in the life of Jesus. And then on this other side, uh, we have many scenes from the passion of Jesus and his death, and then we have Christ rising from the tomb and his ascension. On so we have young scene. Jesus, and then chronologically, for the most part, comes around to the elder Jesus. That's right. Okay. And then I understand that over time, actually within the last decade, there were some renovations done mm -hmm. to the church. Right, that's right. And when we renovated the church, aside from 
you know, re reorienting the, the whole sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Also, it had to do a lot of work on the roof. The roof was in bad shape. The two shrines on the sides, this one and this one, mm -hmm. and actually a good size too, very large uh, and, and decorative, really beautiful. Right. Tell me about the shrine. We've got some nice mosaic shrines really on this side. It's, it's a shrine to St. Joseph, which uh, has four depictions from his life. And on this other side we have, it's really a shrine to all saints. So you see in the middle kind of a Trinitarian uh, symbolism of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. But I, on either side uh, you see names of various saints that are patrons in a sense of, of the parish, but also many of them also, many Augustinian saints as well, and different famous saints that are. What is St. Nicholas the patron saint of? St. Nicholas, uh, it's famous for being a patron saint of the souls of purga in purgatory. That's one of his, his, main, his main things. But also he was also well known for it his time, in his time as caring for the sick and for the poor, and also being someone who was an evangelizer who went door to door uh, talking about the gospel message. But uh, so you must be one of their favorites. Um, so as we approach the altar, we saw something that we don't usually see in a church, which is a large screen, uh, which obviously much more modern using media. Tell me about sure, this. Sure, sure. Well, we've just kind of put that in last year or so. And really the, the point of it is we felt it would engage people a little bit more uh, to have some more visuals, uh, particularly um, during the mass. Mainly we use it for the lyrics of the songs, but we also use it um, for different announcements before Mass and after Mass, kind of telling people what's going on and what's, what we want them to come to and what's available. People have really enjoyed it and you know, have had a good response to it, and it just makes it easy. They don't have to you know, look through any missalettes yeah. or hymnals or anything to find the hymns. Yeah. So I think it's encouraged singing as well. I want to just point out two other important areas here. We have the Shrine to Our Lady on, on my right, which also, uh, in addition to the statue, also has four scenes from her, her life. And then on, on this side, we also have our, our baptismal fund, obviously a very important uh, point in the church where uh, people are welcomed into the faith, whether they're as children or as, a, or as adults. The altar area is very, it's very open with the marble steps. It's really Yeah, kind it's of kind of wide open here, so it's, it's real good. Why don't you come on up? Yeah, excellent. Okay. So here we are in the, the sanctuary. It's kind of a nice wide open sanctuary here at St. Nick's. Um, and actually, I, I have here a, um, a book that's from the commemoration of its uh, dedication in 1964. And it shows kind of a different altar scene. We have the, uh, an altar rail here with the altar back against the wall and even a different crucifix at the time. Um, was that the star painting on the ceiling? Was that in the That wasn't here either. Yeah, that wasn't yeah. They have a lot what of it, different... The star, we know what that represents now. Right, the star uh, of St. Nicholas. But also, in, in this case, it was kind of uh, painted, I think, on that canvas to kind of mirror, in a sense, the, the oval window that we have above the, above the yeah, crucifix. Yeah, it does. So that works well. Stained glass, too. Tell me about some of the stories that we're looking at here. Right. Are the images A lot of different glass? symbols in here. Um, different symbols of, uh, of the different apostles and of the evangelists, the four evangelists there on the side. And I think on, in this window we have many uh, symbols that also are symbols of Mary. So um, quite a lot there. And then of course in the sanctuary we have the main focal points which would be the altar and the pulpit itself and the, the chair where the priest presides from and the, uh, the tabernacle here off to the right. Our crucifix here is where it's, right now it's all decorated for Easter. Even the crucifix has the, um, the white cloth draping from it as a symbolic of the resurrection. St. John's, when we pass St. John's, do they have their own uh, chapel or is that affiliated sure. in some way? What's, what's the affiliation? Well, technically St. John's is, I guess, within the boundaries of St. Nicholas of Tolentine, although they, they got people there kind of taking care of campus ministry and all that. But um, St. Thomas More Church or chapel is really connected to us in the sense that any baptisms or weddings that take place at St. John's are actually recorded here at St. Nicholas of Tolentine. Oh, so they do actually perform sure. weddings, baptisms, service every week, Certainly. I'm guessing, services. Sure. Oh yeah, they have mass regularly. So Father, you have this wide expanse of an altar and this right. massive space. How, how does it feel when you're standing up here giving your sermon? Well, I mean, it can feel impressive, but also daunting, uh, you know, especially if it's a full crowd in the church. Uh, to try to preach to them and to reach out to the people. Um, but it's, it's a great community, so they're, you know, it gives you a feeling of warmth and, and welcome here. One of the great things about St. Nick's is we have the, our little side chapel 
called Our, Our Mother's Chapel, the Mother's Chapel, they dedicated Our Lady of Good Counsel. And uh, that gives a much more intimate feel. So, so a wanna... smaller intimate chapel. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna take, take a look. look at... Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's go. You're watching a lost episode of City of Churches. We'll be right back. It's the long-awaited brand new season of NET's Emmy Award-winning series, City of Churches, with more churches old and new and the neighborhood surrounding them. Join us for the unmatched skilled architecture and the fascinating history of our parish churches. For a unique view the public doesn't usually see, tune in for the return of NET's Emmy award-winning program, City of Churches. Returning soon with all new episodes and a new host, me, Anthony Mangano, right here on NET. Hi. Welcome back to the lost episode of City of Churches. Okay, so Nick, um, here's our our mother's chapel. This is a mini chapel, huh? Yeah, nice. It's, it's about 60 or 80 people, so it's great for weekday mass. And if you look to the back here, this is really where the mass was originally celebrated against this back wall. And um, and you can see some of the saints that won the popularity contest that we had. We have here <laughs> Saint Anthony, Saint Jude, Saint Francis of Assisi, and Saint Therese, the little flower. But the other thing that's different about um, about the pews here is actually they're built to swivel. That's because again, oh, okay. when the church was built in 64, this was the Very daily neat. mass chapel. So they'd be seated like this. But and now, if they were here for Sunday mass, particularly the mothers with children, to face this so way. the mother's chapel, they could be here with the children. Right. Right so is this really ever facing that way anymore for the most part? No, it's really, everything's it's pretty facing much this, this way. way because that's, that's yeah, because that's okay. where the altar is now. But it's really a nice space, for, especially for daily mass. We even use it for funerals, you know, because if the crowd is no smaller, more than 60, it's intimate, like yeah, you said. It's okay. nice. It's a nice space. Some of the, the stained glass windows here are devoted to different apparitions of Our Lady, Our Lady of Fatima, and Guadalupe, and Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Knock. And so, as you see, we have um, many different images of Our Lady in this chapel dedicated really to Our Lady. Um, in this area, we also have. Uh, an image of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, which is uh, a great, there's a great devotion to that among, particularly among our people here. And on our right, we have an image of St. Faustina Kowalska. Um, she was just uh, canonized in the past, in the past decade, really, by, by Blessed John Paul II. And uh, St. Faustina is, is, was a, a sister in Poland who had a great devotion to the Lord and had the, the apparition of the Divine Mercy. Uh, revelation of the Divine Mercy, and that's actually what's depicted in the image here in the middle of this, this area. One of the last things I wanted to show you here was something a little different about our, our church, and yet very practical and somewhat unique, and with a nice addition that they made in the renovation here, I'll show you, it's our tabernacle. And what's different about the tabernacle here is um, it swivels so that for Sunday masses, that we can access cool. the tabernacle out there. That is and definitely something we haven't seen before. For weekdays in here. And so this really actually becomes actually also a blessed sacrament chapel where people can come and pray as Have well. Have you seen this before at other church? I've never seen that. I think once, once very, or twice I've seen cool. it, but not too many. Makes your life easier. You don't have to run back and forth. Absolutely. To do this. Uh, very Much cool. easier. That's great. That's a great way to end this show, I have okay. to tell you. Now, before we do wrap up, how would folks get here? What's the nearest subway, nearest highway? Well, we got the F train. comes right nearby, Queens Boulevard and Union Turnpike. Um, we're located between, really, Grand Central Parkway and Loyola Expressway. Right on, right off Parsons Boulevard and Union Turnpike. We got plenty of parking. Anybody who's coming here by car for Queens, that's a good thing. Plenty Lot, of parking. Lots of parking. What about a website? Yes, our recently updated website is www.imsnt.org. 
imsnt.org. That's the okay. one. Thank okay. You. Father Tom, thank you so much. Thank I you. I really appreciate the tour. Thanks, Very interesting, man. and thanks for taking the time to do this. I love this small chapel. This is great. Thank great you. Convenient. It's my pleasure. That is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Thanks. Very thanks. neat. Until next time, I'm Nick Vavis with City of Churches. Well, that's it for this week's lost episode of City of Churches with our previous host, Nick Vavis. Remember, if you'd like any information about this episode or you'd like to recommend a church, please contact us at www.netnewyork.net or follow us on Facebook or Twitter. For City of Churches, I'm Anthony Mangano. Thank you so much for watching. Please come back and God bless you.